Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make cool geographic carvings with your Shapoko CNC machine. Now first I'm going to go through a few examples of what I've done so far. And the first one here is of Oahu. And this was carved with aluminum. It is possible to do that. I'll show you in a later video. Here's a second one carved out of aluminum. This is a Behringer Crater, which is a crater in Arizona. Uh, the second one, or the third one in this case, is a wood carving of the surface of Pluto. So let's get into this and I'll show you how to make these. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Thingiverse. Now Thingiverse is an excellent website where you can get all sorts of 3D images and different types of graphics. And in this case, I'm going to look up craters because I like the crater carvings. Now you can see here we have Gale Crater on Mars, also some lunar craters. Uh, but let's scroll down and click on the Behringer Meteor Crater. Now as you can see here, this crater has a 1 meter resolution. The goal is to get as accurate a resolution as you can, because when you carve out this piece on your CNC machine, you really want it to look nice. And there's different types of geographic images on here, but we want something that's very accurate. And you can even see that the road is visible because the resolution is so accurate. So we know that this piece is gonna come out nice. But I'm not interested in this crater. Today we're going to carve Mount Tambora. This is a mountain in Indonesia, and it has a nice crater in the center as well. So all you really need to do is download the file. And once you've downloaded the file, you're going to mesh cam. You'll want to go to File and open up your part. In this case, for me, that's going to be Mount Tambora. Generally, it takes some time to load. You see here, I go with the millimeter option. This keeps it scaled down. Also, we want to go with the three-axis machine. Um, and as you can see here, the piece does need to be scaled down. It is quite large. I like going with pieces that are 4 inch by 4 inch pieces. Um, and you see here, I go with the 0.2 scale. This gets the piece down to about 3.76 inch square. You don't want a piece that is huge because it'll take a long time to machine. And you see here, as I'm going over the file, I'm trying to see what the size of the piece is. This is very important because you don't want something that is huge. It can cause the machine to go over its boundaries. You, and you see here that it's about 3.76 inches square. Now what you want to do is go to Cam Generate Toolpath. And for your tool, you go to Select Tool and enter in what your tool is. In this case, I'm using an eighth inch ball mill. This is an excellent tool for these types of purposes because it has really accurate values. And you can see here that the depth per pass, which is per layer, is half a millimeter. This is good for medium thickness woods. And the step over value, which is how much your tool steps over when it goes to a new layer, is 0.1 inches, just a little less than the diameter of the tool. I've had a good feed rate of 400 millimeters with a plunge rate of about 5 inches. This is how much it plunges at, and you can leave your stock to leave at zero. Uh, and if you go over here to see finish pass, you want to enable a finish pass. This is what gets it polished. Um, also, you want to cut over X then Y because that polishes the X value and the Y value. The step over should be quite small. For this case, I use 0.2 millimeters to get a really polished look. I have a feed rate of 15 inches and a plunge rate of 5 inches, which is the same as it was with the roughing value. Now you want to hit enter and wait for the toolpath to load. Be patient as this can take a while depending on the size and complexity of your piece. Now that it's complete, you can find out how long it'll take to carve. Now, just for reference, the green lines represent layer cuts, the red lines represent travel, and the blue lines represent boring. You can see here that there are quite a lot of layers. When we estimate the machining time, we can see it'll take about 587 minutes, which is about 8 hours. And marking off parallel finish, it see you basically cut the time in half to 311 minutes. So this can give you a good estimation of whether or not you want to shorten the parallel finish or modify the rough operation. And now all you really need to do is save the file. I'll save it as mountain in this case. And then you have your .nc file, which you can now use. Now all you need to do is download the Universal G-Code Sender. This is an excellent software for all types of CNC machines. Once you've downloaded that, all you need to do is plug in your CNC machine Find the correct USB port, load the file, center the machine, and hit run, and you're good to go. 
Make sure the tool bit starts up in the top right hand corner. Once the machine is going, make sure you're always within sight of it. You can pause it at any time if you need to leave. The end result is a beautiful carving of Mount Tambora. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.